We also have times where we have plenty of green to work with and we want the ball to run and release. There are two ways to do this. The simplest, the easiest way is to use that same hinge and hold method we just learned, but to change clubs. So I've taken my nine iron, I'm going to go to a pin that's about 60 feet away, I'm going to do the same hinge and hold method. It's going to be a shorter swing because the ball obviously is going to come off the face faster since I have less loft and it's going to be releasing. But I'm going to break the wrist early and I'm going to accelerate and notice where my hands are going to finish. They're not going to stop at the ball. So it's the same hinge and hold, break the wrist. And follow through. And you can see the follow through, the arm and the club have formed a straight line and it's very easy to control distance that way. Watch one more time. Hold it going through as I accelerate into the shot. Now, because I was lazy growing up as a kid, in my backyard when I would hit a bunch of shots from around the green that my dad made, I didn't want to change clubs after every shot. So I learned how to hit each shot with the same club. I'd like to show you how to hit a low running shot with a lob wedge. I have my 60 degree wedge, and the only thing I'm going to do differently is scoot the ball back. That's going to deal off the club. Now, of course, the club will come into the ground steeper, and it may stick into the grass a little bit, but I'm going to use the same technique, the hinge and hold, break the wrist right away, hold it going through. So the ball's back in my stance, almost off my back foot here. I break the wrist. I accelerate through. I accelerate through. And I'm able to hit a low running shot with a high lofted club. I love chipping. I've done it my whole life. I've had a chipping green in my backyard. I've worked hard on it. The hinge and hold method feels very easy to duplicate. I love hitting shots, but sometimes chip shots around the green are not the best play. In fact, it wasn't until I gave up my ego and love for chipping at the Masters that I finally won. 2004 was the first year that I started putting from off the green. The grass around the green was so tight, I couldn't get my lob wedge underneath the ball effectively. And so I learned and practiced putting from off the green. Now, there's really not much difference technique-wise when you putt from off the green. You may want to have the ball a little further in your stance to give it a little more loft, but not necessary. What's critical is that you don't look at the green. You've got to read the fairway. And so many times people look at the green and they feel as though it's going to be fast and they leave it short. They never give it enough effort. So what I try to do is read the fairway. I try to read the speed of it, which is why I always hit a few putts before I go play from off the green. I try to read the break and I try to get a good feel for it. But really nothing is different. I keep the same ball position. I just try to look only at the fairway, not the green, which is going to be drastically quicker than the fairway. Oh. I'll break the wrist and follow through. And you can see the follow through, the arm and the club have formed a straight line and it's very easy to control distance that way. Watch one more time. Same setup, break the wrist, hold it going through as I accelerate into the shot. 